I would like to show you how a zoom camera lens can see around an obstruction by zooming in under certain circumstances. This coin here is partially obstructed as you can see this shadow here and as I zoom in I can see the whole coin and as I zoom out I can't see any of the coin so I'm zooming out and the coin disappears and uh, I want to show you why. I'm going to reset to the beginning of the sequence I have here. So when a lens is at full zoom, it has a large effective area. And when you zoom in, or when you zoom out, that effective area becomes small. And you can see this is only a 55 to 250 millimeter zoom lens, so it's not even that great of a zoom range if it were you know, like a 10, a 100x zoom, or you know, a greater x zoom than this, the ratio between the small area and the high, large area would be much greater. This uh, circle is just a circular tube light I'm using as lighting so that you can read the text around the lens here. And so here's the first clue. When we cover the center of the lens, we're blocking off view to the active area, to the effective area. But when we zoom in, the effective area becomes larger and we can see around the blockage, the obstruction, because all this area here is now gathering light and focusing it onto the sensor. Now here's how I've set this up so you can see the effective area. I've taken this large um, soft red photography light and put it behind my camera here so it's actually shining in the eyepiece. It's a, it's a single lens reflex. So the when it's not taking a picture, the mirror is out of the way and the light that can come in the eyepiece also goes out the lens just like light coming in the main lens comes out the eyepiece. So this allows us to see this red light coming through the lens when we look in there like this. See there's the red light. And then I can take, see here's my red light coming in the, in the eyepiece, coming out the lens. And then I can take and zoom it in and zoom it out without moving it too much. I got it propped up on this wrench here. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. When it's zoomed out to wide angle mode, the, this inner lens moves further back towards the sensor. And the lenses, there's several layers of lenses that all move around, but the end result is that there's a small effective area. See all the light hitting this black area here, even though it's going through this outer lens, that's not the only lens. There's lots of other lenses inside. And I'm sorry, actually they move they move forward when you zoom out. They move back when you zoom in. But it doesn't matter. They move around in there to change the effective focal length. And when it's to wide angle mode, all this black area, the light that goes in this area, just hits the plastic. It doesn't ever hit the sensor, so it's only gathering light from this small area. And so that's why blocking this small area creates an obstruction in wide angle mode, but not in zoom in telephoto mode, because then in telephoto mode it begins using the whole area. You can see this is a 58 millimeter size diameter lens. So you can see here, when I create an obstruction in the center, it can either be totally obscured or not much obscured, depending on whether I'm zoomed in or zoomed out. Camera keeps sliding around on me. Okay, now I've set up an obstruction here, which represents, say, the edge of a table or something. It's just a cardboard, a black cardboard sheet, which I've set up here to block just the minimum aperture, the minimum effective area at um, full pan mode. So you can see the sensitive area is right here in the middle, but it's blocked. And you can almost see a little bit of the red, but basically it's not sensitive to anything in this area, but when you zoom in, you can see the effective area grows, and now there is a large effective area above 
the edge of this so this lens could that actually then see over this to see something that would have been otherwise obstructed. Now of course if this edge were if this obstruction were all the way up to entirely cover the aperture of the lens then it wouldn't matter how far you zoomed it still wouldn't see around the obstruction. But if the obstruction doesn't obstruct the whole lens area then zooming in to use the whole lens area allows you to see around it. I actually used three cameras to make this. One was this um, EOS T2i, but obviously I couldn't use it for this um, shot, so for this I'm using a small handy cam set up on a tripod across the room. And then I also used my cell phone camera for some of the wide angle um, explanation shots. Okay, now I've actually taken a piece of tape and put it across the lens, covering that smaller effective area at full pan, but still leaving some areas open under full zoom. And then I'm going to show you how the picture looks through the camera with the tape over the lens. All right, this is zoomed in. You can see the entire coin here. But when I zoom out, you can't see it. You can see a little bit below here. So basically this big black area is basically the silhouette, the blurry silhouette of that strip of tape up close. You can see a little bit below it because the light coming from below it actually um, reaches the sensitive area of the, the effective area of the lens. And a little bit's coming up above it too. But in the middle it's all it's all blocked out. But as I zoom in, it comes back into view as the uh, effective area of the lens grows. You can see, if I go a little bit at a time, the tape's actually kind of at an angle from focusing, and here's it, this, the remnant of its shadow. This light over here is coming up, coming from above the tape, and this light here is coming to the below of the tape, and then this is a shadow of the tape, basically. But as I zoom in, more and more effective area um, shows up outside the tape, and so it actually sees around the edges of the tape, and you can see your subject, which is pert near 100 years old. Next year will be. Okay, now I've set up the camera with an obstruction, an opaque obstruction that blocks a little over half of the lens. So you'll be able to see how it deals with an obstruction that's, you know, covers half the lens or a little less than, a little more than half the lens. This was um, used by some people on the internet to show a video of a coin disappearing at the far end of a table and um, that was because the camera, their camera was slightly, their center line of the ca optical center line of the camera was slightly below the edge of the table, and when they zoomed out, the edge of the table covered that smaller effective area of the lens, obscuring the view of the coin. But when they zoomed in, they could see the coin because it was using the upper part of the lens, and the effective area grew. So this is my setup for these um, shots. So here's the coin. zooming out and as I zoom out the effective area gets smaller and smaller and the shadow from the obstruction so there's how it is when it zooms out and the shadow from the obstruction gets bigger and bigger now this is that cassette tape sitting there I'm going to shine a light behind it so you, yeah, I guess you can't really see it but it's too close to be focused and I zoom in and reappears the coin because the uh, effective area gets bigger. And there's the coin without the obstruction. Let's 
see I can s literally set that obstruction in there completely block the view of the coin and then zoom in and see around the obstruction well that's it you can use this trick when you're like filming through a fence or a screen or something that's real close if you go to full zoom that will possibly completely eliminate it and then make it look like you're not looking through a fence in your film.